We're talking about graphing transformations. Let's start with an easy transformation. y equals a times f of x plus k. Here's an example. y equals negative 1 half times the absolute value of x plus 3. Now first you want to ident identify what parent graph is being transformed. And here it's the function f of x equals the absolute value of x. And so it helps to remember what the shape of that graph is. Absolute value looks like this. It's got a little corner at the bottom. Uh, and there are three key points that I usually like to start with. There's the point negative 1, 1, the point 0, 0, and the point 1, 1. And my technique here is basically to take points of my parent graph and transform those points first and then plot the transformed points. So these are, gonna, these are points of x, absolute value x. And this point is really important. This is my this is my vertex, right? The turning point of the graph. And so I want to see where the vertex ends up, because that'll be my new vertex. Now, when you look at this function, the function is basically saying multiply the absolute value of x by negative 1 half and then add 3. Now, this means two things. First of all, all the transformations are going to happen on this side of the column. And secondly, um, there, what are the transformations? This multiplication by negative 1 half, what does that do? Well, first of all, multiplying by a negative number is going to flip the graph across the x-axis. Multiplying by a half is a vertical compression of the graph. And adding 3 will shift the graph up. So we have x, negative 1 half, absolute value of x, plus 3. But you'll see all that when you do the arithmetic on these numbers. Now, first of all, we'll just carry the x values over, because nothing's happening inside the absolute value. So those are the x values. and then. For each of these absolute value of x values, I'm going to multiply them by negative 1 half and add 3. So 1 times negative 1 half is negative 1 half, plus 3 is 2.5. 0 times negative 1 half is 0, plus 3 is 3. And 1 times negative 1 half is negative 1 half, plus 3 is 2.5. Um, that's not a bad start. Let's plot these points. We've got 0, 3, this is 2, 3. We've got negative 1, 2.5. So that's neg negative 1 is here, 2.5 is here. And 1, 2.5. Those points are kind of close to my y-intercept. Let's plot some points that are further out. So let's say, oh, well, negative 6 and 6. Negative 6, the absolute value is 6. 6, the absolute value is 6. Those x values will translate right over. Oops, positive 6. Um, but what happens to the absolute value? Well, we multiply by negative 1 half and add 3. So this times negative 1 half is negative 3 plus 3, 0. Again, 6 times negative 1 half is negative 3 plus 3, 0. So we get, we get negative 6, 0 and 6, 0. And those are these points here and here. And that's going to give us a much better graph if we use points that are further away from the y-intercept. So this is going to be our graph. And you can see that the graph is reflected across the x-axis, right? Normally, the absolute value graph opens upward like this. Now this one's opening downward. You can also see the vertical compression, right? The slope is uh, it's less steep than the absolute value usually is. And you can also see that the vertex has lifted up three units. So you can see that vertical shift. This is our final graph.